next step is to have a look at this big, wide, wonderful, scary thing called social media where there are a million opportunities, a million different things out there. Every single day, there's something new popping up. Do I want to get involved in everything? Am I going to run from one to the other trying to find out which one's going to work for me? Or am I going to have a look at where I'm at, assess where I want to go, have a look at who my market is, start listening to what they're saying, take a step back. What are the people that I potentially want to be marketing to saying about my competitors' products, about my products? Where are they saying it? Do I need to be on Twitter? Do I need to be on Facebook? Do I need to be on Dig? All sorts of things, delicious. There's, there's so many, it's actually scary. Where do I need to be communicating with my market? Find out where they are, and then start to put a strategy in place to start communicating on those various forums. So like I said earlier, listen twice as much as you talk. You know, if, if I had to arrive at a networking event with that little gun in my hand, and I started shooting it off, how, how many people do you think would come across to me? I've got a, I've got a message, haven't I? I mean, and, and you can hear it, it's very loud, and I'm spraying it all over the place. How many people are going to come and want to listen to that message? Social media is exactly the same. If I'm going to get onto any sort of forum, if I'm going to be talking on Twitter, on Facebook, wherever I'm going to be talking, I need to be making sure that I'm giving, listening, taking. Because as soon as you are standing screaming your message on, on, on any social media platform, people are going to run a mile. So how do people actually make connection with me? I put out my inspirational quotes every single day. I write blogs. I make videos. In fact, right now, I'm busy making my next YouTube video. So I'm using every single opportunity that I get to generate material to put onto my social media platforms. And the more material, I'm one of those creators, I create material. Every single day I write a blog, every single day I write an inspirational message that goes out on my social media platforms. The important thing to remember is yes, you, you create, but be careful about volume. That was the mistake I started to make when I first started on social media. Just after I left Peter, I thought it was about volume. The more I could say, the more people would love me, Rubbish. The more I said, the more I went out, the more people I lost. Because people eventually became overwhelmed by the volume of stuff that I was putting out there. So, the rule of thumb for me, and it might be different for your business, but the rule of thumb for me is maximum of two um, posts on Facebook a day. YouTube, maximum one an hour. You know, you find these people that become overwhelming. Every five seconds, there's a Twitter tweet coming through. Overwhelming. People don't want to hear that. You need to look at your business. You need to look at your unique set of circumstances. And you need to make a decision. That's one of the big decisions you need to make. What do I want to say? How often do I want to say it? And then you need to measure it. And you need to see... If I'm saying something, how many people like what I'm saying? How many people are commenting, feeding back, giving me some kind of response? Because anything you do, whatever gets measured, gets done. So if you're not measuring what you're doing, and, and all of these social media sites have incredible analytics available, you can actually go in and have a look at who's looking at your stuff. But then there's that secret little group of people that are watching your stuff, but they're not commenting, interacting, etc. So you need to keep that in mind. And you need to understand that there is a, a large percentage of the people out there that are watching your stuff, looking at your materials, but not feeding back. So what I generally do is, is if I'm getting between 10 and 20 likes on a, on a post, I know that it's working. And potentially there's 100 or 200 people that have read that. And in fact, if you have a look at your analytics, it tells you on your 
on each post, exactly how many people have actually looked at it. So use those measurement criteria. Measure your stuff as often as possible. How much time needs to pass between measuring anything? I don't know, a week, two weeks? I mean, how long is, how long is enough time in grade one? Okay, a oh, year. So by the time I get to the end of 12 months and I haven't measured my stuff, it's too long. But you need to look at your own unique circumstances. And you need to say, how often do I need to measure the materials I'm putting out there, the feedback that I'm getting? Is it working or isn't it? Success in anything is about having a recipe. Now, Peter gave us an incredible recipe this morning, a process that you need to go through to understand what you need to do, then take the next step. If I'm baking something, and I, I've half mixed the, next, the, the stuff, I've still got it in powder form, I haven't stuck the eggs or the milk in, and I stick it in the oven, what's the chances that I'm gonna get what I wanted out of it? Zero. So it's a process. You can't miss out steps. You need to understand that there are steps to go through. So follow the process, understand each step, make sure that you are completely comfortable with every single step, then proceed to the next step. But there's one other thing. If I've got a recipe, which Peter gave us this morning, a fantastic recipe, and I now start applying this recipe, Am I going to be as successful as Peter the first time I do it? Uh, for example, I mean, if I know somebody can bake the best chocolate chip cookies and they've just won a competition, and I get their recipe and I bake it, can I, can I bake as well as they can? Probably not. But the 15th or the 16th or the 20th time that I bake it, could I do it as well? Probably. And that's what you need to understand. Social media is about patience, it's about persistence, and it's about compounding. If you take somebody who's, who's got 125, or, or you take somebody's diet, and you take 125 calories out of their diet, you take another person and you add 125 calories into their diet. After five or six months, hardly any difference between the two. If you, if you take a rounding error, then weights are pretty much the same. But 31 months later, the person who took 125 calories out of their diet today, which is a can of coke, is 9 kilograms lighter, and the person who added 125 calories to their diet is 9 kilograms heavier, 18 kilograms difference in weight. What am I saying? I'm saying it's about consistency. So compounding works even if you know about it or you don't know about it. So if you add 125 calories and you didn't know about it, but you're going to be 9 kilos heavier. 31 months later. But if you know about it, and you consistently take action every day, you know, social media is not about dipping your foot in the pool and pulling it out and going, okay, let's see what happens. Social media is about jumping into the pool, immersing yourself in it, and becoming part of the conversation. That's how you become successful. It's about consistency. It's about persistence. Because that's what's going to make you successful in social media, is consistency. People don't want to hear something from you today, and then two weeks later you pop back into the conversation and go, Hi. It's about being there every day, participating every day, contributing every day. That's how you become thought of as an expert. When I went over to America and I arrived, Forrest Ward is a collector. He collected 22 pages of my quotations. Based on that, he decided, well, if somebody can consistently produce quality material like this over such a long period of time, he must have a good message to deliver. And hence, hence the contact. Hence the, but where did we actually do the business? We didn't do business on Facebook. We took it off Facebook. We started speaking over here. We started communicating on websites. We started communicating via emails, via direct messages through Facebook. Because you can't do business on Facebook. You can't do business on social media forums. You can't be the person sitting there with your feet braced against the table going, you will buy from me because they're just going to click. I don't like you anymore. It's that easy on social media. 
So what do I do with social media? And, and listen, this is my recipe. This is what works for me. Is it going to work for you? You know, a pair of shoes that fit me perfectly. <coughs> if I had to put them on you, you'd probably get blisters. The gentleman sitting next to you, they're probably going to fit perfectly. So what I'm saying is, is this is some invitations. I'm trying to offer you a couple of invitations, some ideas, some things that have worked for me. Because I'm no social media expert. Peter's the social media expert. I'm just the person that, that Chambers asked to come and talk today and give you some practical ideas of how I've managed to take social media, bring it into my business, and turn it into something successful. So what do I do? I basically have three major things that I use. I use Facebook, Twitter, um, and, and LinkedIn. Incredibly powerful forums to create content, to put content out there for people to become aware. Now bear this in mind. If your objective is purely to create awareness, then that strategy is great. Then I can spray my message out there and hope, and it does happen, Forrest Ward found me and invited me over to America and I had a great trip. And as a result of that, I've got three more trips. Two, two more, three in total. So, does that work? Yes, as part of your strategy. But if that's your only strategy, that's naive. But part of your strategy, no problem. Communicate, have a message, understand what does my market want to hear. Give that to them, freely, with no preconceived idea that if I give you five messages, I'm going to make money. Because one thing that social media is not is an ATM. It's not something that you walk to the wall. In fact, the other day it was hilarious. A friend of ours, his daughter was saying, you know, she wanted something. She said, well, I don't need money. And the little girl said, mommy, just go to the wall and get the money out the wall. It's so easy, okay? Well, this is not a wall. This is not one of those walls that you go to and you pull money out of it. Hell no. This is a process of giving, sharing, becoming part of. It's, it's, think about this. If you go to a networking event... And I stand at the networking, and this is something I want you to be careful of. I'm digressing, but it's very important. Do you go there with some debaucherous photographs that you took at a party that Saturday where you were slumped over the counter or something like that? Would, would anyone do that at a networking event? That's why I say beware. Because people are tagging you, putting photos onto your Facebook that you don't even know are there. So be careful if you have what you think is your social Facebook page that nobody's going to see. Hell no. Listen, I use it for research. In fact, last Friday, I had, I had an appointment to go huge. They're the labor brokers. Don't hate me for that. Um, and they needed somebody to do a big speech. They, they were five companies, but, but I don't guess. What they wanted was me to come in and, and, and sort of pitch for the business. So what did I do before I went? I went onto social media. And I researched the MD. What was the first thing that came up? On his Facebook, there he is standing in Cape Town on his GS1200. So what did I do? Jumped on my GS1200, arrived outside his window and went vroom, vroom. Got off, went inside. We never spoke business for one minute. We spoke GS1200 for an hour. And as I was walking out the office, he said to his secretary, um, Cancel the interview with Ivan, Andrew's doing the talk. 